This is simply for those who actually care about having the right to choose for shit. I know some of you don't give a damn about having the right to choose whether or not you want to get vaccinated, whether or not you want to wear a mask, whether or not you agree with this form of compliance. But this video is for the people who do. Listen to this and notice the agenda being pushed past mass and distancing now into the next phase of vaccinations and leveraging everybody in society to get one you're going to be having the scarlet letter in society if you don't get this coronavirus vaccination profess for our help listen to this shit the race to develop a coronavirus vaccine some major questions are emerging Good evening, I'm Kimberly Hunt. And I'm Steve Atkinson. A lot of people are wondering if the government could force people to get it, or could people who refuse get banned from stores or lose their jobs? ABC 10 News anchor Derek Stahl spoke with a legal expert to get some answers. Imagine a world where you have to get vaccinated and show proof to go shopping, board a plane, or just go to work. Legally, it could happen, says University of San Diego law professor Dove Fox. States can compel vaccinations in more or less intrusive ways. They can limit access to schools or services or jobs if people won't, don't get vaccinated. It could force them to pay a fine or even lock them up in jail. Those measures have been adopted in other... Even lock you up in jail. <laughs> Think about it. And when a lot of you profess freedom of speech, freedom of choice... This is not that if they're leveraging you to where if you choose not to do it, you go to jail, you get fined, you get penalized. This is a mandate. For countries like France, but not for so far in the United States. It all dates back to a Supreme Court case in 1905. The court held that Massachusetts could fine people for not getting vaccinated against smallpox. That case became the basis of vaccine requirements at schools across the country. Courts have found that when medical necessity requires it, the public health outweighs the individual rights and liberties at stake. Just last year. The public health outweighs the individual's rights and liberties at stake. But coronavirus has never shown to eradicate anything. They only latch on to eradicating shit that's already on its way out. Like smallpox, like measles, like the mumps. So, and, and even with flu vaccines and things of that nature, you still see the flu uh, a parent in society so uh, for our health for you guys to believe that it's idiocracy at this point New York City passed an ordinance fining people for not getting a measles vaccination but there's a big difference between what states have the power to do and what Congress could do there are these questions separation of powers commerce clause uh, questions Professor Fox says a federal vaccine requirement would probably get shot down by the current Supreme Court based on a 2012 ruling on the Affordable Care Act. That means we could have a patchwork of different vaccination requirements in different states. Professor Fox says states would need to allow exemptions for people with legitimate medical risks mm -hmm. like pregnancy, but not exemptions for other reasons. Religious exemptions, philosophical ones, have largely been overridden in the name of... Like I told you, religious exemptions. So for those who are religious and believe in their right to do whatever they please to their body and not be uh, have somebody invade their privacy, that's out. Your philosophical belief, you believe in homeopathic methods, that's out. Only if you're pregnant or if it's severe. So, essentially, quote-unquote, for the health of everybody, everybody has to get this coronavirus shot. In which nobody has, as these trials have not proven to be successful at all. But they're still pumping it. Bill Gates is still y'all's man's. Public health. However, Professor Fox says recent protests over face coverings show there's a big risk of a backlash here. And just because states have the power to require vaccinations doesn't mean it's the best public policy. Derek Stoll, ABC 10 News. And legal experts say that private businesses would have the authority to fire workers who <laughs> don't want to get vaccinated for personal or religious reasons. So this is the leverage. This is the leverage, my people, because I know many people don't want to get the vaccination. But if you work, if you are in school, the leverage they have against us is telling us 
that if you don't get it, we have the right to refuse service to you. You have a scarlet letter on your fucking head. And it went as far as him saying, stores. Can't enter a store. And now this is another study just for my relative people. I think everybody should be skeptical. But melanated people, people of color particularly, I must say this. Your medicine on this planet was already made before a man dealt with it. Your medicine is already here, naturally, before a man dealt with it. And man-made drugs have not shown to be helpful to you. So what does it say? COVID-19 lack of diversity threatens to undermine vaccine trials. Haven't we seen this before with the MMR vaccine? Okay, let's read. Why is it being undermined? A study was done. A thousand healthy, white, healthy adults... 91% were white, with 5% Asian and less than 1% of black. So, the lack of diversity risks blind spots in developing a vaccine for a condition that has disproportionately hospitalized and killed people of color. So, this, coron this coronavirus vaccination hasn't even shown efficient to black people because the studies that they do don't even have black people in it mind you coronavirus i mean not coronavirus but vaccinations in our history have had a history of affecting black boys black babies sterilizations medical practices within these institutions have shown to harm black people native american people people of color at a higher rate so if you got that pigment on you, you need to be wary. And I must say this for everybody watching. If the pushback don't come now, we'll be drones tomorrow. When it does come time to mandate, if enough citizens don't stand up against this shit, there will be, it will be justified to give somebody a scarlet letter. Because it's going to only be a small percent of people non-compliant, throw them in jail, uh, make sure that they're societal rights are stripping and most of y'all will be cool with it but if more people push back we have a chance to fight and stop this wave that's going on it's your boy damn i don't know what to tell you niggas i try to tell you niggas about the mask the distancing and that it's all protocol portland the militarizing of states the 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 protests all of it's for a different agenda that some of us can now see. Most of y'all think that they're literally looking out for your fucking health. I don't know why you think that about this government. I don't know what they've ever shown you when they pump McDonald's and milk in your body <laughs> for advertising. But, man, it's time to wake up. The time is now, America.